if this new information about the RTX 40 series turns out to be true, well then this could be the biggest performance jump that we have ever seen. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. That's right, leaks and rumors about what appears to be the RTX 4090 have already started to surface online, and now this new information comes from the Twitter user Graymon55, and I've started to see him uh, do some more leaks and rumors recently. However, there is also a comment that came from Comp87Kimi as well, and many of you may know him for like, being actually a pretty accurate leaker uh, when it comes to NVIDIA in the past as well. But in any case, let's go ahead and get into what they had to say about this, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. So according to Graymon55, he said, quote, RTX 40 series 2022 Q4 through 2023 Q1 and 5 3090 double performance, that's what I heard recently, not sure if it's true. And now I'm going to go ahead and break this down real quick before we get any further into this. And so what he's meaning here is that he's likely referring to the uh, actual release date being either uh, Q4 2022, which kind of makes sense based on some previous slides that were shown by NVIDIA, or it could be as late as Q1 of 2023, which would be a bit of a shame, but I could actually see that happening. And then N5, of course, means Five nanometers. That's all very important to see just how much more performance we could get out of the RTX 4090, or at least that's what I'm going to be calling it. And then I'll give you my thoughts on the performance of this uh, in just a little bit here, but let's go ahead and read on here. And so then we actually do get a response from Cop87 Kimi, the prominent leaker, and he actually responded by saying easy. So it seems like he's actually in agreement with uh, this post coming out from Graymon55. So I think this does give it a little bit more legitimacy. Of course, we are a long ways out here. So even if this information does turn out to be true, it could end up actually changing in the future. They could release it a little bit sooner. They could release it a little bit later. They could actually hit their performance targets. They could miss their performance targets, or they could actually exceed their performance targets. But I think this does give us a rough idea of what NVIDIA is likely shooting for right now, which looks like it's going to be something that's going to be incredibly impressive. But then Graymon55 goes on to say this, quote, I'm referring to rasterization performance. As for why the next generation is promoted so much, one reason is the use of 5 nanometer. The frequency will be greatly improved. The other is the huge specification and ultra high power consumption. And then he actually goes on to say in the comments below, I think the next generation will appear 450 to 550 TDP graphics card. So yeah, there's a lot to break down here in these tweets and there's definitely some stuff I really do agree with and there's some other stuff that I don't agree with so much. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see if it does end up coming to pass. But with these two uh, different leakers here kind of starting to agree on some of this stuff here, I think if there's some smoke, there's probably going to be a little bit of fire as well. So I do think uh, that they are at least hearing some targets coming from NVIDIA right now. Uh, whether or not they're going to be able to hit those targets, that's something we don't know for sure yet, but these targets are mighty impressive. But let's go ahead and break everything down uh, real simply here so we can kind of uh, jot down some notes. So uh, what we know so far is that according to Graymon55, it looks like the RTX 4090, or what I'm going to be calling the RTX 4090, is going to be produced on likely either Samsung or TSMC's 5 nanometer. I believe they'll probably go with Samsung again just so they can get that massive allocation so they can get as many GPUs GPUs out as possible because I do think that demand for GPUs is going to stay higher than normal for quite some time. Now, I do believe that these like massive shortages and these super high prices uh, that are way over MSRP are going to be going away shortly here. But again, so we got five nanometer, likely Samsung. We're talking about performance that he's saying is going to be double the amount of the RTX 3090. Now, is that actually going to be the case? Um, honestly, I'm a little bit mixed on this because on the one side, you have some people saying that the 7900 XT is going to be over 2.5 times as powerful as the 69. 900 XT, and while that is technically possible, I'm a little bit doubtful if they're going to actually be able to hit those performance targets, or whether or not those performance targets are actually even alluding to the rasterization performance. So AMD's next flagship card, I do expect it to get probably close to double the amount of performance as the 6900 XT, and if you're uh, watching this and you haven't watched any news updates on the AMD GPUs, you might be saying like, well, that seems absolutely ridiculous, both the RTX 4090 and 7900 XT becoming, it's, you know, suddenly two times as fast just seems a little bit, you know, out of left field that seems like it's gonna be a little bit too hard for them to achieve however honestly you got to remember that at least according to the most recent leaks and rumors it looks like the 7900 XT should be moving to an MCM design or multi-chip module design meaning that they're actually going to be kind of stapling two GPUs together which is definitely going to be a huge performance increase now the only issue they're going to have there is probably the latency and that's the only reason as to why I think they might not actually be able to exceed two times the amount of performance in the 6900 XT but either way their performance increase on the 7900 XT is likely going to be very, very large, and it's going to be a big imposing threat 
on NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is going to have to push for an absolutely mammoth GPU to try and compete with a multi-chip module design coming out from AMD. So then when I hear two times the amount of performance on the RTX 4090, well then it's actually not as shocking or hard to believe. Now there are some low-hanging fruit on the Ampere design that's available right now in like the RTX 3090 that NVIDIA could make some quick changes to get a lot more performance out of. And then on top of that, if they're uh, going to be increasing the amount of CUDA cores, which there were leaks of those uh, coming out previously where they're supposedly going to be having like, I think is like 70% more CUDA cores on the RTX 4090 or whatever that card was that was leaked. Well, if they have a huge increase in the amount of CUDA cores and they also fix some low hanging fruit, such as the integer slash FP32 performance on the uh, RTX 3090 and all the other RTX 30 series cards, well then yeah, they could definitely get a massive performance increase out of this card. So personally, I wouldn't be too surprised if you see somewhere between like 70 and 80% more performance out of this card. I honestly don't think that's too high. I think that is very achievable by, by NVIDIA. And honestly, I do think they absolutely need to hit at least 70 to 80% more performance on this GPU if they're going to be very competitive with AMD. And even then, AMD may actually be able to take the performance crown, at least in rasterized gaming performance. So honestly, I think they will be able to get at least close to two times the amount of performance. However, I don't think they're going to quite hit it, but I also do believe that's probably their performance target. I think they are going to be trying to target two times the amount of performance and just see how close they can get. So yeah, overall, I do think that the RTX 49 is going to be a massive improvement in terms of performance. I do believe they are going to be on that Samsung's five nanometer. They're going to have to go to five nanometer because I think uh, like uh, this guy mentioned, Graymon 55, it is going to be a very power hungry card. I mean, if they're going to be increasing the CUDA core count, there's going to be a lot of memory on the chip. If it's going to have, you know, higher clock speeds, if it's going to have, uh, you know, all these FP32 plus integer performance, it's going to be far better than what's uh, available on the RTX 30 series. Well, all that's going to draw a lot of power. So yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised if you did see like a 400 watt GPU. Now 450 to 550 watts, I think that's pushing it a little bit too much because, you know, at that point you're talking about a GPU that's going to need like what, like four eight pins because, you know, two eight pins is technically like 300 watts. So I, I guess if they did uh, three eight pins, they could do a 450 watt GPU. So I think that's probably the upper limit of what they could possibly drive on a GPU. But I do expect this GPU to draw a lot of power. So if you're sitting there and you want to buy like an RTX 4090 next time around, you got like a 650 watt power supply. Well, I got some bad news for you because these GPUs are probably going to be very, very power hungry because NVIDIA is going to be pushed to the absolute limit to try and compete with AMD, considering that they're going to have that very advanced MCM design in their GPU. And they're also going to probably be using TSMC's five nanometer node as well, which is also going to give them an advantage over NVIDIA. So yeah, I think NVIDIA is basically going to have to hit these specs that are getting put out by Graymon 55. If they're going to have any you know chance whatsoever of competing with AMD, I hope they are able to pull it off. And honestly, I hope those TDP numbers are a little bit lower than what's being shared but it's probably not too far out of the realm of possibility. But there's one thing we haven't touched on yet, and that's the price. And while we don't have any leaked information about the price so far, well, uh, if you're hoping that these things are going to be even cheaper than the GPUs that were available this time around because, you know, supply and demand is going to fix itself, well, I got some bad news for you guys because, you know, even if supply and demand completely fixes itself, let's say next week that you can buy every single GPU for under MSRP. It's not even MSRP, it's under MSRP. Well, I still got some bad news for you guys because, honestly, I think it's it's very unlikely that prices are going to come down. And in fact, I don't think they're even going to stay the same. I think prices are going to go up for a number of factors. Now, the first reason as to why I believe prices are actually going to go up on the RTX 40 series is that we've seen some really massive inflation this year. And NVIDIA is going to want to keep their profit margins the same. So instead of, you know, eating a little bit of that cost or finding ways to reduce their production costs, I think they're going to be pushed so hard uh, to try and compete with AMD that they're probably honestly both just going to be increasing their prices. I know it's something you guys don't want to hear. I definitely don't want to hear that either. But another reason as to why I believe this is going to happen is because not only is there going to be inflation, but on top of that, a lot of, you know, especially miners, but also some gamers out there were also buying GPUs for way over their MSRP for a very long time. And trust me, guys, AMD and NVIDIA take a look at that and they keep that in mind when they go ahead and release their next generation GPUs. So don't be too surprised if the RTX 4090 is like at least 2000 US dollars. Honestly, I wouldn't be too shocked if it came out at like 3,000 US dollars at this point. I mean, people were buying 3090s on eBay for like 3,000 US dollars. So honestly, at this point, I wouldn't be too surprised if Nvidia just looked at that and went, well, they're buying them for $3,000 anyway. So why don't we just release a new product and actually charge MSRP of $3,000? Then we get to pocket all that money. It would totally be something that they would do. You know, they kind of sort of did the same thing uh, when the 1080 Ti was selling for $1,200. Then all of a sudden you got a 2080 Ti. Guess how much it costs? $1,200. So if you don't want Nvidia or AMD to increase their prices, if you want to mitigate the amount of damage that's already been done, 
down. What you can do right now is do not buy any GPUs over MSRP at all. Even if it's like $1 over MSRP, do not buy them because the more we buy these GPUs for over their MSRP, let's say you're buying like a 6700 uh, XT for $700 because it's much better than it was for $1,200. Uh, that's really actively harming the GPU market in a really bad way. I've seen some very disturbing trends of some gamers out there. Now, it's not a whole lot of them, but there, there's a, a you know vocal minority of gamers out there who are actually kind of defending the raised MSRPs of these GPUs. Uh, I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know why they want to be charged more. That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. But if you do see GPUs out there for way over MSRP and you see uh, you know your friend uh, wanting to maybe go buy it, try and just tell them, hey, wait for uh, just a little bit longer here. Uh, GPUs are dropping in price. Just have some patience because if we continue to buy these over their MSRP, it's going to have some serious and significant impacts on the next generation of GPUs. But hey, that's just what I think. How fast do you think that the RTX 4090 is going to be and how much power do you think it's going to draw? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.